There you go. Hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here. And, and Tor here. Yeah! Look, he's real. He's here. He's, here. he's real. We haven't seen you for so long. Yeah, it's been a while. We've missed you. Yeah, likewise. It's good. I want to say it's good to be back, but it's good to be back in the new place, I guess. Yeah. Well, back in the UK. Yeah. You can say that. that is. Yeah. Uh, say for that. anyone requiring some context at this point, um, this is Tor. How do you pronounce your surname properly? Mergenson? Yeah, that's pretty good. You, you probably wouldn't do the umlaut thing, but okay. that's okay. Mogensen. Yeah. To Mogensen. pronounce it properly, you would have to rip out your tongue. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so no umlauts. Um, <laughs> and uh, we first met Tor, and uh, viewers of the world will know Tor via his previous job, which was at TC Electronic. Yes. And you were saying that one year ago, pretty much to the day, yeah. you are now? I am now working for Universal Audio, hence the little ox box behind us. Which is very cool. So again, regular viewers will know that we're big fans of uh, UA Audio in general, not least for the Ox, but also because all of our recording is done with Apollo 8P and um, UAD plugins. So we are great fans of UAD, and it was a it was a heartwarming moment when we heard you were. You yes, were indeed, yeah. indeed. Thanks. How is it? It's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's it's an awesome company. I can definitely say that. What's um, your actual job? My job is sort of the same thing that I did at TC um, so far with a little less of this sort of video thing. So if I'm a bit rusty, apologies, I haven't been on camera for a year. <laughs> um, but uh, but apart from that, yeah, it's the same sort of thing. Product manager, I guess, is the official title. So it's coming up with ideas and kind of seeing them through from... So some from, new Universal Audio compact pedal series coming yeah, up soon? Series, no, 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 no. Modeling no. guitars Let's, coming next year. Yeah, modeling guitars, yeah. <laughs> Right now, I can say that my main product is Ox. And there's a new firmware update. There's a new firmware update. Um, that's sort of my first product. Oh, wow. OK. So out for, for UA. OK. So what's new? So what's new is we've added um, five new cabinets, um, two of which I'm personally really happy with because, okay. um, you know. The other three are rubbish. <laughs> the other three really suck. Oh. Just in case you don't know, so the Ox. Uh, we've had it on the show a lot. Um, the a, a succinct description of the ox would be uh, cabinets, mics, and room and effects for your valve guitar amplifier and an inbuilt um, reactive load attenuator as well. We went to um, Real World Studios and recorded a couple of songs, we which we used ox throughout. Um, you can watch our previous videos, and there are links below if you need any more sort of background information. On Ox. Yes, that's yeah. an impressive bit of kit. We expected uh, nothing short of that from UA, but it's yeah, it's very, very impressive. But one of the criticisms was no vintage 30s, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. And that's exactly the two cabinets I was talking about that yeah. I'm personally really happy about. First of all, I think they sound great. Second of all, as somebody who sort of dabbles a little bit in hard rock and metal stuff, really, you really need... <laughs> it came as a total surprise to you. <laughs> um, yeah, you really need Vintage 30 cabinets. Sure. Um, so we have two new ones in there. And you're actually listening. Who would have thought? But you're listening to the highway through a sort of like a Mesa Recto style 4x12 cap. With oh, oh. Vintage 30s wow. in it. That's the other reason we wanted to do this video. The high watt sits there week after week after week. And we were all fizzy about when we got it. And we used it a bit. And it blew our heads off. And quite a lot of you have said, look, can we please hear it through some attenuation, the ox specifically? So we thought, well, why not? Tor's in the neighborhood. He lives in Denmark, which is not near here. Uh, so he's in the neighborhood. Why don't we plug in the high watt, look at the new firmware update and see what we can learn. Oh yeah, the other bit of context is, uh, this is for charity, all right? Is that the first video you're doing with the... Uh, there have been a few, but I think it's probably important to mention it all the, all the time. Yeah. So you're halfway through the... Uh... Yeah. Yeah, I, quite, I mean, I'd look quite like to keep it, even though I do look like my 12-year-old cousin. It's the plan to do like a full-on, yeah, you know. It's not going to happen, is it? Let's be honest. How um, hairy is your 12-year-old cousin, though? <laughs> <laughs> hairier, hairier than me, that's the point. Okay, um, all right. But the, 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 the real point is we've raised uh, almost £1,500 for Movember, hey, which awesome. is the charity that's in aid of uh, men's health issues, including prostate cancer, testicular cancer, mental health, and some other stuff. So it's for a really great cause. And again, there'll be a link below if you want to do that. Okay, context. Sorry, let's play the guitar. I've got to stop running in tight jeans for the testicular thing. Ah, oh. uh, yeah. It's, a, it's, oh. a, it's an issue. I had wondered if that's why you yeah, straight switched the trousers. Right. There you go. Yeah. Dan has eschewed the denim jean of late. 
uh, in favor of the more loosely fitting trouser. Like an MC Hammer style kind of thing? <laughs> pretty much, pretty much, <laughs> pretty much. All right. Yo, can't touch this. Let's, um, all right, here you go. So this is this is the boogie style cabinet. Is that right? Yeah, that's all right. right. So Mick, have a on that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so this is just the amp into the cab. So the amps, we've got fairly oh, loud. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, for anyone who can't see, the high watt has its master volume at twelve o'clock. We will crank it a bit in a minute. And the uh, normal and brilliant volumes are um, jumped, as you would on a uh, many four input amps. So it's kind of it's loud. If it were not attenuated, it would be hearing damage yeah. loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So this is just the amp. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go for it. I'll play this for a bit and then I'll pick up something more familiar, but it seems absolutely right to have a P90. It was in tune when I bought it. Yeah. <laughs> so glorious sounds. Uh, we are hearing in the room at the moment, we do have the amp, uh, the cab, and we have speakers yeah. so that we can just hear the ox. It's a little disconcerting car. because Dan and I aren't used to hear, hearing the guitar sounds hit us in the face like that. Shall I turn the amp off for yep. a second? Yep. All that aggression oh, from, nice. with the top end mm. and everything and the bite and everything. Cool. Very cool. So that's that's the Yeah, so that's one of the new Vendor Sturdy style caps. The yep. other one is not surprisingly a Marshall style cap. So it's essentially the same cabinet, it's just, you know, with a different build construction. Okay. Um Tor, before we move on to that, yeah. would you would you mind just um so what have you got on there at the moment? You've got it set up with So I have it set up and this is actually we're using my lovely colleague Tom's. Uh, hey Tom. Hey Tom. Um, hey Tom. His ox box. Um, so I just browsed through some of his uh, presets here, and mm -hmm. we're using one with the new. It's called the California V30 cabinet, yeah. um, and we have a couple of microphones on there: a Dynamic 57 and a Ribbon mic, 121. And for the room stuff, we have a condenser mic um, and just plain drive. Ox also, as you said, Ox also has some built-in effects. Mm -hmm. Those are off right now. Okay. Listeners, could you would you mind just giving us a little uh, listen to each of those yeah, microphone totally sources? Yeah, So we'll just solo the uh, the fifty seven first. Yeah. <laughs> for the room stuff, which is going to... Could you um, turn the other two mics on and just have the ribbon mic on and off? Yeah. Uh, the, sorry, the room mic on and on off, off yeah. for a sec. Oh, sorry, so we'll just do... Yeah. We'll mute the room mic first. Yeah. It's a That's funny so thing. Cool. It's it's weird because when you listen to it by itself, you kind of go like, "What the?" Yeah, hell? yeah. But it's it's one of the things when I you know started the UA and I got my aux. It's you know whenever you try IRs or whenever even if you're in the studio with somebody micing and you know a cabinet up and it's all close mics, you have this feeling of like it's yeah, right yeah, in yeah, your yeah. face and mm. it's you know it might lend to a decent tone once you you know put it in a track, but the feeling you get when you play is sort of this really. 
uncomfortable kind of thing. Um, and the room mic is really sort of the magic thing that uh, that kind of brings back this feeling of actually playing in a room with a crank mic. I think, mm. so. I think that was one of our realizations, wasn't it? Whether we're talking about Ox or we had a look at the Strymon Iridium last week. And Dan and I traditionally not massively au fait with direct sounds, but the minute you start adding that, it that just, room yeah, back in there, yeah, it's like, oh, yeah. there we are. There yeah. we are. This feels a little yeah. bit more familiar. It gives mm. you seems to give you more elasticity or something under the fingers that yeah. just makes it feel a bit more. There's a sound thing to it, but there's definitely also a feeling thing. It makes so, you yeah, it's yeah, yeah. you know, it's like playing with a little bit of compression, it's just or a little bit of delay. It's just like, oh yeah, here we go. Now it's now it's nice and easy again, right? Um so yeah, and I should say that um, you know, you can of course blend all that stuff to your heart's content. There's definitely sounds out there the way you'd probably have less of the room mic. If you wanted like super right. aggressive metal stuff, you don't yeah. want the room that much. Um, but that's all something you can do and taste. And the thing about this in general, I think, and one of the things that really, again, it's funny to be product manager of a product that I actually didn't design. I have to get credit to all the guys at yeah. UA who actually did this stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm just kind of here to steal all the thunder, I guess. Um, but it really surprised me, first of all, how great it sounds and how mm. much fun it is to, you know, to, you know, to, to play around with and use at home or, mm. or, or in studios. Um, and, you know, when you, you know that then from, from doing the, the G2 stuff and the gig rig stuff is that there's a certain magic when you get somebody else's product When you do it yourself, you know, you know, this, you know, everything about it. Sure. But then you, you get a, you get a piece of kit and you actually don't know exactly how it's done, but you just go like, oh man, this oh, yeah. is really, really cool. Yeah, definitely. And that's definitely my feeling with this. And one of the things that I find super cool about the Ox is the fact that all these mics that we're turning up and down in here are basically all part of this enormous algorithm. Mm. Because if you put if you put a real cabinet and an amp, of course, in a room with the mics, all this stuff interacts. Yeah. It's not like you have like an isolation box around yeah, one right. microphone yes. and then you have an isolation box next to another microphone and the room mic is just this sort of isolated island. It's all part of the, the full sound. And the phase relationships between them uh, all. All that, that stuff, stuff is basically mm. built into Ox. So when you turn stuff up and down, you know, when you when you till the mic, when you do all this stuff, it's actually built into the model and it's going to react like it would in the real world. And that's, you know, to me, honestly, I'm not... An engineer, I'm not a producer kind of guy. I wouldn't have the faintest clue. Even if I've had like the best studio and the best mics, it would probably end up sounding pretty shitty, to be <laughs> honest. But with Ox, it's like, oh, it's my little cheat box. I can right. get these sounds without, you know. So yeah, where were we? So that's the first cab. Yeah. So and that's the second the cab, cab that you really like. Yeah. Um, is the um, is the Marshall version of that? So let's see if we can find something over here. Um, it used to be, this is old news now, but we'll go over it anyway. Ox uh, was only iOS for a while there, but now there's um, a user interface for... Yeah, for PC yeah. as well, and iPad as well. Yeah, so Mac, PC, and iPad. And iPad, yeah. Yeah, okay. Awesome. So uh, this is the this is the traditional, more traditional, I should say, yeah. Marshall style cap. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So mad, the EQ on that high watt. It, so it's a 1973 DR 103, right? It's the, it's that the hundred watt high watt signed by Harry Joyce. It's it's Pucker. It's the Gilmore one, right? That, is that the one he plays or played? Yeah, he well, he's his ones were modded quite substantially, but that's uh, certainly one of the ones he would have used. Yeah, um, you know, from the before he started modding them. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it's the it's the high watt. Yeah. It's the high watt on amps of that vintage. Normally the Especially on a plexi, you start messing with the EQ and they don't really do anything once it's 
Yeah. At that that EQ is like an active EQ. It feels like an active yeah, EQ right. and it's so tweaky and you can you can really tweak it. Master volume from 1973, you know, it's just all this stuff that was felt like it was way ahead of its time. Uh, what's in there? Uh, so this is the Marshall cabinet, but still with Windows 30s in it. So essentially, it's exactly the same speakers. The only difference is the modeling of the uh, of the physical cabinet. Uh, we we wow. have to A-B that, don't we? Yeah, we do. But let's actually put this back and then just switch between the cabinets so we have exactly the same sound. Typically, I would prefer to, you know, kind of tailor the microphones sure, to the sure. caps. So, but uh, we can totally do that. So, if you play now, we're back on the uh, on the uh, on the Mesa one. It's fascinating that th that just the different modeling of the cab because the speakers are the same, mics are the same. Yeah, everything's the same. It's just a cabinet, and it's it's, yeah. it's funny that you you could go down the rabbit hole there of being. I mean, clearly, UA's put a lot of work into that and has very carefully modeled that cabinet room. But I think by the time you get to sort of consumer end, by the time you get to us using it, it's just like here's a variation. Yeah, mm. and I think if you get to if you get too stuck on the fact that you must use the, you know, the V30 loaded Mesa style yeah. cab, and actually some part of your brain actually prefers the other one, it's okay. It's just a variation. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. You don't need I to mean, anything goes. You could, you know, you could plug that into like a Vox style cabinet or something. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you think it sounds good, um, and I think in general, um, obviously this applies to this cabinet, but all the cabinets in there. To me, uh, it was sort of a revelation because some of the amps I have at home sort of was brought back to life again because you know. If you have like a Fender Blackface style in, mm -hmm. regardless of what it is, and you just, you know, you play through your 1x12 Jensen mm -hmm. cabinet, which is what, you know, if you have it like a deluxe reverb or some variant of that, you know, that's the sound. You mm -hmm. know it, it sounds good, you like it, but suddenly you go like, hey, I wonder what it sounds like if I just use like the two twin, which suddenly turns it into like a Viper verb or something like mm -hmm. that. Wow. Um, so it's like, oh, now it sounds totally different. Sure. It's still within that same range, but, you know, it's, it's almost like you you get an extra amp almost mm. doing it that way. So that was the, there was so there's two 412s. Yeah, and there's one more. There's actually one more 412. So that is a greenback, but it's not the uh, before this ox came with the uh, two greenbacks. So uh, it's called 25 thick and 25 punch, which are basically you know like the more of the bass heavy and yep. the, the treble heavy versions. But now we have added a 30 watt greenback, which is like you know that'll take you into ACDC. That sort of okay. 70 style. Trying to grab your junior. So now and not play ACDC riffs. I can't play any ACDC riffs. That's otherwise. correct. You can play Kansas as well, or yeah. any of like the seventies rock what, bands. I'm that's gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna um, get some humbuckers. There we go. Just to get a bit more of that going. And what I want to do before the end of this video is get you find you a sound that um, that's kind of home for you. And okay. I also want to hear a couple of different cabs on the high watt because the yeah. one thing we don't have for the high watt is different an appropriate cab. Sure. So it'll be interesting. Any ACDC? <laughs> Can we just compare that to yeah. the... Uh... So again, I'm doing the same thing. We're just, again, we're just switching between the caps. So no changes on the microphones or anything, just so... You know, everybody out there can hear the difference. So now we'll, we're hearing the uh, 30 watt greenbacks. We'll switch back to the Windows 30s in the same style cabinet. Mm -hmm.
really interesting, isn't it? That tighter. Yeah. Because you, my, um, when I see a Recto 412, I just think about excessive low end and all the rest yeah. of it. But actually, that it, from there, it's tighter. And that would kind of make sense given that when they came along for the first time with like the rectifier style amps, There's really, so much really heavy end, gain, yeah. so much mm, low end anyway. Yeah. Maybe they tune some of that out. Yeah. I don't know. That's for the, the birds to discuss. But um, yeah, you do get that resonance in the. In the more martially ones, yeah, mm. yeah, which I guess is what they're known for, or yeah. at least on paper, what they're yeah. known for. Yeah, and that kind of slightly more aggressive, you know, upper mids, that kind of ah, snarl right. kind of thing. Yeah, which is cool. Because here the, uh, the the vintage, uh, the, the thirty watt greenback one again. The thirty watt greenback, yeah, it's you. Yeah. Um, so, do you say there are only three cabs or three that you particularly love? Uh, well, I really love all of them, to be honest. I have to say that, of course. I actually really like some of the clean ones. We'll get to those. Yeah. It's just that up until now, for the metal stuff that I play, I really haven't been able to use Ox okay. to its full potential, because especially on the rhythm stuff, I'm I'm so used to playing Windows 30s. Sure. Yeah, so yeah. it's like, you know, yeah, you can get there, sort of, with some of the other cabinets that are in there, but it's, you know, the Windows 30s is like home. Sure. Yeah. And as soon as... Those were in there, it's like, oh yeah, now I'm back. It's like a little blanket of just yeah, a so comfort a better, blanket. A better demo of that would be with something like a rectifier or a diesel or, yeah. or something in that yeah. vein. But yeah. again, if you have like, you know, if you have like a, you know, a, like an old GMP or, yeah. you know, or even a Plexi, playing through the, the 30 watt greenbacks is a hell of a lot of fun. <laughs> and it's also a way to get a slightly more loose low end for, you know, for solo stuff. If you, if you, if you don't want it that super tight and aggressive that mm. the the vintage 30s will give you. Sure. So yeah, so those are the three of the new caps. So those are three new 4 by 12 caps. And then we've added two uh, two caps that, well, they'll work great for drivers well, but they're, I guess they're targeted a little bit more towards a different kind of, you know, style of music. So mm -hmm. one is a 2 by 12 cap. So think like a twin open back style cabinet. Right. Um, but with, um, we've modeled a two JBL oh, DF, okay. D one twenty Fs. Yeah. So, essentially, you know, these super hi fi sounding, right. very loud, very heavy, um, pristine, lots of low end, lots of treble, um, great sounding speakers that you know all country players love. Uh, if you're into like you know jam bands, Grateful Dead stuff, that's mm -hmm. um, and even though Stevie Vaughan didn't use, you know. 12-inch uh, speakers, it's the same style of speaker that he would put in some yeah. of these amps just in 10-inch 10, uh, 10 and 15-inch versions. It was a really common mod, wasn't it, to silver yeah. face fenders in particular yeah. to add um, JBL high efficiency, yeah. high power, yeah. large magnet speakers. Because they... you needed more headroom from a fender twin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Somebody did. Yeah. Yeah, and they weren't like... You did, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. You did that? You, yeah, yeah, he yeah. kept And they get them, so it? ridiculously heavy. It's yeah, yeah. crazy. It's like, yeah, it's insane. But it was a really popular thing because what you didn't want as a, as a clean player was the speaker to distort as much. Yeah. Right. You wanted the speaker to stay yeah. more efficient and yeah, it's the kind of it's it's the Steve Ray Warren thing with like, I don't know, fifty six or fifty eight low E strings and just hitting yeah, yeah, the thing yeah. like and hearing you know, hearing it like a piano, like Let's go to Cleanland for a minute then. Yeah. Let's have a listen. Shall I I'll turn the high watt gain down a bit okay. so that it's So that's just the amp into that speaker.
Wow. <laughs> Super, like, crystalline. Yeah. No, none of that fuzzy speakiness. You know, that thing that... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, wow, it's also, amazing. You know, it's, uh, you know, Eric Johnson, clean. Yeah. Two twins with JBLs in them. So that's, right. Yeah. Just mega high headroom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're not going to slavishly go through every single new cab, right? I think there's take... only one left, so we could oh, sla oh. slavishly do the last one. Slavishly do the last one. <laughs> For some reason, I, I've got ten in my head. I obviously wasn't listening. Um, yeah, cool. Yeah. Let's let's do that. I was gonna okay because so we were listening to effects let me off see the board. If I there. can find a preset with that guy here somewhere. Try this one here. That does. Okay. Sounds. So, Clarity, mid-range, what's that? Yeah, so that's a that's a very specific cabinet that we got our hands on. And it's a 1x12 cap, open back, with a another JBL speaker, but it's a little bit more of an esoteric one. It's called G125. Right. Um, which was heavily used, or heavily, you know, quite popular in like the late 70s and early 80s among certain of the early boutique builders. Okay. A certain Mr. D. Okay. Oh, mind. wow. Okay. Um, and this particular cabinet um, is actually one that's done by him. And it's oh. been used uh, on a couple of really cool albums, some little feet stuff. And, and oh, like that. man. And it's, a, and it's a, I really like that cabinet because it have, has the same sort of clarity as you, we heard before in mm. the 2x12 with the JBLs, but that's like, that's hi fi. That's like really shimmery, sparkly. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it can work good for some sort of crunchy tones. It can get a little bit like, woof. Mm -hmm. um, whereas this one has sort of like, it's just rounded off yeah. nicely. Yeah. Um, so you can definitely, I mean, we heard it with a bit of, uh, of drive bit of on it as well. Yeah. And, you know, so it sounds great for clean stuff. It sounds great for, uh, for crunchy stuff as well. And it's just a nice little, it's sort of a, just a way to kind of get some different flavors out of your, you know, Regardless of what sure. style of, uh, of you know Fender style amps is in particular, I think whether you're more of a tweet guy or mm. a blackface guy, or getting into like the um, where was it, the two rocky yeah 
dumbbell style aims um, works really good for all that stuff. Mm. Interesting. Let's have a quick listen to that. <laughs> thing we haven't done is we've had we've got some effects on the board here yeah which is great because you, you know if you're using your regular amp and your regular effects you can keep everything uh, familiar to you <laughs> but there's a whole load of post yeah effects in here yeah. can i wonder i was going to play the strap for a bit seeing as we're on that dumbly type cab um can we hear some of those yeah. yes let's do I it i have them plumbed in so we can actually just turn them on and off at will all fancy like <laughs> with yeah you'll have to explain this okay. yeah so basically ever since ours came out there's been a foot switch jack on the back but it's sort of been it's been lurking it's been lurking in the background it's been chilling out having a nice drink and now it's sort of you know it's coming into the front um so we enabled the foot switch jack on the back um and with the software it allows you to go in here and basically assign Foot switch is whether you have like a G2, which is what we set up, which is, you know, super convenient. Or if you just have like a little, you know, passive or active uh, pedal, you can use either. Uh, so we're just using like a TRS cable yeah. into the foot switch at the moment. So you can assign the effects per um, per connection, I guess. And you yeah. can it can be latching or, or momentary. Is that correct? Yeah. So the moment we're just using latching. So Nick, if you play this and then I'll kick on, what's this one? This is the reverb. So this is without the reverb. Oh, sorry. And the delay. Yeah. Mad, isn't it? It takes a direct experience of like, oh, oh, because you're hearing it through. We are monitoring through 1500 watt EV PA speakers. They are a little bit in your face, yeah. literally and figuratively. Um, and you just add that reverb and delay on, and it's like, oh, hello, there we go. all day long. <laughs> Nothing at the moment, but I can turn something on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is there a? Um... There is. Uh, there's one compressor, so it's basically eleven seventy six style yep. studio compressor. Oh, could Damn. be worse. Damn. Yeah. Uh, so let's see here. Let's turn it on. I have no idea how the settings are on these, but.
uh, the reason I asked and the reason I dug in a bit more is because that directness of those full range flat response, yep. you can just mitigate that quite significantly yeah. just by sticking some compression yeah. on there. Now, mm. There's a lot of compression on, so this is sort of like a little feet style, you know. Oh God. <laughs> stop there <laughs> um, if you don't know who Little Feet are uh, check out Lal George just the most unbelievably musical guitar player who has mm. famously used two 1176s so you have a couple stacked. of guests here from time to time who I think yeah. have listened to a little bit of yeah go and listen to Joey Landreth yeah. who you're going to see tonight <laughs> yes I am the brothers Landreth are currently on tour in the UK going to see them yeah apologies for my slide playing there but no 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 apologies for it we did it <laughs> yeah, yeah, very cool. Yeah, so that's a little run through of the uh, of the new software that we have out. So it's uh, see what you've been working on. What you've been making you busy for the last twelve months? Well, I've been keeping you away from I've us. I've been I've been dabbling in some other stuff that I can't really talk about. Yeah, yet, you've been talking. You've been doing other stuff. But um, um, you? yeah, I guess I I don't think UA hired me just to do a software update. You're gonna do around, a UA germanium fuzz pedal. <laughs> I can feel it in my bones. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you, so, um, will we see new stuff from UA at NAMM? Or is it after that, do you think? Definitely new stuff from UA, not from me, I can say this okay. Okay. at this point. Not it's um, no two early days for that, and I can't really talk about what it is. I think one of, the, one of the cool things for me has been to really immerse myself way more in the studio thing, mm, yeah. uh, which is a ton of fun. I mean, you guys talked about the Apollo stuff, and it's... That's really been a treat to kind of dive headfirst into more of that stuff. It's genuinely, genuinely, genuinely game changing for us yeah. mm. when we went from yeah. what we were using before, which to be fair was cost effective, really great mm. kind of, you know, run and gun kind of capture stuff. But going from like a handheld, good quality recorder to a really decent interface yeah. and it was literally game changing for mm. us. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. But, but yeah. Name, there will definitely be some cool stuff coming. So okay. Anybody who's over there or just watching on all the feeds and stuff should keep their eyes open. Fabulous. Mate, it's been so great to see you. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out. Thanks for Brilliant. thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure. It's great to see you. It's yeah. good to see you. I can't believe you've been there a year already. Yeah. Can you where did you get your t shirt as well? Oh, this one? It's one of the coolest t shirts I've ever seen. <laughs> no. <laughs> if, you've, ah. if you've never tried that drink, try it. It's a really brilliant pre dinner yeah. drink. It's a Weird plug for a t-shirt company. It's, it's a German company called The Dudes. Okay. The Dudes? The Dudes. And they have a ton of t-shirts. I don't know if they still make this, but I love Negroni, so obviously yeah. you got to have that. It's a great drink. Um, there's one thing we should do before we go, Dan. Yes. Um, we've got the high watt there. We've got the ox there. Right. Just want to hear it. We want to crank the high watt to patent pending and attenuate it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because that's what, that's what we've been wanting to hear, I think, sure. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll 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 go out on that. I think. Yeah. Okay. Literally. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Also, go to thatpedalshowstore.com and check out t-shirts and pedals and strings and all this stuff. There's new stuff in there as well. Yeah. Uh, also, massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
Uh, and finally, uh, our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is... Uh, Anderson's Music of Guildford in Surrey. And our friends in Australia... Would be Pedal Empire of Brisbane, Queensland. I also want to mention Sweetwater in the USA. If you click down our products, you'll see links to things. There's a link to Sweetwater. Now buy your stuff wherever you want to buy it. If you buy it from Sweetwater, it helps us pay to do the show. So just saying that, Sweetwater, thank you very much for doing that. Brilliant. Uh, cheers, guys. And thanks again for coming out, mate. Thank you. Awesome. Have a great week. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.